Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm so excited with what I'm about to show you guys. So we continue with our universal system and in case you are behind, here is one of my first tutorial videos on this system that you can watch immediately after you finish watching this video. So after pawn to d4, our universal system begins with the move pawn to d6. Because at this point you don't know what white wants to play. Is it pawn to c4 next? Is it knight f3? Is it pawn to e3? Or is it bishop f4? first. By the way, I covered all these lines in my first two tutorial videos. So I'm not going to talk about this. And I said against all these lines, the move you always want to play is pawn to c5. For example, after c4, you just go pawn to c5. The idea being after white takes, instead of taking right away, you just go queen a5 check. Then on the next move, you either take with your pawn or better with the queen, which was my top recommendation. And then next you continue playing your traditional perk defense ideas. As highlighted on the board. So this is more like an improved perk defense with an open queen side. At least we won't be late to attack on this side of the board and we won't have to worry about h4, h5 or any other kingside pawn storm. Anyways, however, in today's video we are looking at this move pawn to e4. This is one advantage of playing the universal system as black simply because you may force white to go back to e4 like this and turn this into the perk defense if you want. Or maybe you do what I'm about to show you in today's video, trying out the check defense, my top recommendation. So what is the check defense? Well, the check defense, which is more of a system than an opening, is just an opening response that begins with knight f6 and after knight c3, instead of playing g6, you simply play pawn to c6. This is no longer the perk defense or the peers, but now the check defense. I like calling it the check system. Now here is the thing you guys, before I continue with some exciting lines that you may try out in your bullet games, blitz, rapid, and even in classical tournaments, this is what you need to understand about the check system guys. We only used the first two moves of the perk defense as a distraction. Inviting white to start pawn storming on the king side cause most likely we are not even thinking of fianceroing our bishop to create these weaknesses where they like attacking a lot. In other words, we just played knight f6 to tease our opponent making them believe that we are after the perk defense while our real plan is to focus on the queen side like this. If they become aggressive, you remember to execute our plan beginning with queen a5, pawn to e5, pawn takes, and queen b6. Done. Those are the only things to memorize in the check defense. So first, let me show you what many people play, which I don't like. For example, after pawn to f4, many people play queen a5, which is okay, because they are pinning this knight so that they can take on e4 next, and that's why white plays bishop d3 to protect the e4 pawn and then there's this move pawn to e5 the theoretical move of course which is my top recommendation but after this white usually plays knight f3 the top played move in both the leeches database and the masters database and now this is when most black players start complicating stuff beginning with the move bishop g4 leaving the tension like this on the center oh i hate this and see how complicated the game becomes in the long run you guys white plays bishop e3 and then black players play knight bd7 all this is fine by the way nobody wants to take on the center the rule is whoever takes first opens up the game and most likely black is going to emerge with a better position according to stockfish so white players just castle short in this position and then this is where black plays bishop e7 and after pawn to h3 this is a line that all check players are told to memorize and keep in their heads you don't take immediately on f3 even though that's still okay but you first of all go bishop h5 so that should white play pawn to g4 trying to trap your light squared bishop you first of all trade off your e pawn like this attacking their bishop this is what check players are told to play but I hate it. The thing is, if pawn takes bishop, yes, this gives an advantage to black because you're going to take back a more powerful bishop and next you are ready to take on h5 with your queen supported by your king's knight. However, it doesn't happen that simple. 
after you play d takes a4. White players usually take with their dark squad bishop on a4. And then this is when Czech players play bishop g6, intending to go h5 given a chance in the near future. And say something like queen e1, this is when black may castle short, knowing that now the king side is very safe, white doesn't have an f pawn. But there's still tension on the center if you think about it. White is yet to push pawn to e5. So I just don't seem to like this. Even if white doesn't play pawn to g4 immediately, by the way, and say they play queen e1, here you have to make a lot of passive moves like queen c7, indirectly defending your e5 pawn or bishop takes f3. So you just have to know this theoretical line, bishop takes f3, and after rook takes, this is when you simply castle short. What are you still doing about the center of the board? This is all very much playable by the way, but when are you going to release tension on the center? So that's why in this video, I want to show you my own unique way of playing the check defense instead of keeping tension on the center. So after white plays the top played move, pawn to f4. Listen you guys, our ultimate goal from here is to slow down white's attack on the king side. We want to slow down the attack on the king side with the move queen b6, which stops moves like bishop e3 because of queen takes b2. But first, we would like to invite bishop d3 by playing queen a5. Because after white plays bishop d3, the light squared bishop will cut off communication between his queen and the d4 pawn, which we can then target with queen b6 later on. Queen a5, pawn to e5, pawn takes, and queen b6. Done. Those are the only things to memorize in the check defense. So let's begin. After white plays the top played move pawn to f4, you first of all go queen a5, pinning this knight to the king and next you are threatening to take on e4. That's why the top played move in this position is bishop d3 by white. But what this does is that it cuts off communication between white's queen and the d4 pawn, which we will later attack with queen b6. So first of all, we go pawn to e5. We are not going to keep tension on the center. In fact, f takes e5 is the worst move that equalizes the game instantly. For example, if f takes e5, you can just take back. And if d takes e5, you can just go knight g4 first. You see, taking with the queen is riskier due to knight f3. So you don't want to run into this attack. So just go knight g4. Because after knight f3, you can simply take back on e5 with your knight. And should white take, you are going to take back with your queen safely. And this is when most of white players cast a shot. And then you go bishop d6. If they play bishop f4, you go queen c5 check, simple stuff. And after king h1, you simplify the game like this and cast a shot. You can also play queen e5 first. So white should never take on e5, period. Even de is not good. Therefore, this is why most white players love developing their king's knight first. This is the top played move. And now I call this the tension line, just like I said. So now that we made white block the vision of his queen on this pawn, this is when we can safely retreat our queen after taking on d4 first, say after knight takes, and then here comes the key move, queen b6. That stops the development of the dark squared bishop. Because if bishop e3, we are going to take the b2 pawn. By the way, if rook b1, the knight on d4 falls. So white is not going to do that. If knight b3 is played, there are a lot of things we can do. Bishop e7, castle short, or my favorite, pawn to a5, because we want to harass that knight. So white has to play something like pawn to a4. And then this is when we continue our king side development. If pawn to e5, we can just take and go knight g4. Next threatening to mate. So they play queen f3. And then this is when we can just cast a shot. If bishop e3 is played now, we always have the c7 square for our queen well reserved. The key move is queen b6 by the way. Let me share more about this. So after d6 and pawn to e4, you remember to start in the style of the perk as if you want to play the perk attacking the e4 pawn and after knight c3 you change your mind and play pawn to c6. The whole idea is to put your queen on b6 but first of all you want to go queen a5 inviting bishop d3 so obviously the continuation here is e5 pawn takes and then queen b6. 
This is the only thing you need to remember. The thing is, if you play queen b6 before playing pawn to e5, white may play pawn to e5 himself and his position is better. So just go pawn to e5. They won't have to take after knight f3, the top played move. Again, you remember to take on d4 first so that queen b6 comes with a serious attack on the knight. Because if you just play queen b6, even here, you're throwing away the advantage. White may play d takes e5. And even if you take back, this will come with an attack on your knight. Even better is knight takes e5 in this position. And position is like... 2.1 in favor of white. You don't have any meaningful moves. So the only things to remember in the check defense are these things that I'm showing you. Play e5 first, e takes d4, 3, then queen b6, 4. That's all. So again, after pawn to e5 and knight f3, you just take. If white takes, this is when you retreat your queen stopping bishop e3 due to queen takes b2. So this one move queen b6 slows down white's development on the king side or his attack. We saw what happens if white plays knight b3. Again, you just start, you know, hitting on that knight. If this, you play bishop e7. But what if they play the top played move knight f3? I mean, in the leech's database. Well, after this, you can just continue with bishop e7. That's the whole idea. No need to play a5. There's no knight on b3 to attack. And after you play bishop e7, it turns out that white can't even play bishop e3 or castle short because of your queen. So they will play moves like pawn to h3, maybe stopping bishop g4. But here you can just go ahead and castle short. Pawn to g4 just doesn't make a lot of sense. Because anyways, in case of g5, you have knight fd7 followed by knight c5. You just leave your pawns on the king side like this. No need to move any pawn forward. In fact, after pawn to g4, you can even play knight bd7. And if pawn to g5, you always have knight h5. Next, you will play pawn to g6, given a chance. I mean, that's if you want. And leave the king side like that. White won't do anything. So again, after e4, you start in the style of the perk, inviting white to defend like this. And then you play pawn to c6, thinking of queen b6 next. Again, let's be aggressive. White plays pawn to f4, so you go queen a5, pinning the knight and also threatening to take on e4. But instead of bishop d3, what if white plays the immediate pawn to e5, not allowing us to go pawn to e5? Well, since you are pinning the knight, you can simply go knight e4. This is even easier because if bishop d2, you take that bishop and after queen takes, now we play the French defense. You don't even take to open up the position. I mean, why? Are you doing that you can also go bishop f5 but theory says just go ahead and play the french defense no need to develop your last squad bishop and you will see why white may play knight f3 and then just like you do in the french you go pawn to c5 first trying to open up the queen side it's here where you're going to see most of your opponents playing pawn to f5 and this is the reason why we kept our last squad bishop on c8 so that should white take, we can take back like this. That's why you don't develop your light squad bishop. Knight c6, you want to take. So they're going to play knight b5, intending to give you a check and win the rook. But here you can just oversimplify the game or just go queen d8. So that there is no knight c7 check or knight d6 check. If they take, you take back with your bishop. This is the beauty. And after knight g5, you simply go... A6, releasing some pressure, knight d6 check, bishop takes, pawn takes. After we take, we're going to be up a pawn. You can try this move first, pawn to c4, trying to chase this light squad bishop away before taking. So again, I'm repeating, what am I saying in the check defense? The only moves to remember after knight f6 and knight c3, c6 and pawn to f4 are queen a5 e5 d takes then queen b6 that's all so don't say nah there's a lot of lines to memorize nope this is where the game ends from there you will just be playing natural moves let's look at something else before i end this video so after pawn to a4 and then you play queen a5 pinning this knight what if white doesn't play bishop d3 and say they go bishop d2. Well, it's up to you to go queen b6 if you want. But following our main plan, we always want to start with e5 before playing queen b6. The thing is, our center is well controlled. If white takes, we have d takes. And after d takes, once again, we don't want to take immediately with the queen due to knight f3. So what did I say? You first of all go knight g4 because you want to take on e5 with your knight. 
like this. So after bishop d2, again, just go pawn to e5 before you play queen b6. In this position, if white plays knight d5, a tactical move, hitting on your queen, just retreat your queen back. And after knight takes, you take back with your queen. Again, white should never ever take with the f pawn. Because if they do so, they allow you to go queen h4 check and probably win the rook after a sequence of moves. They can't even trap your queen, by the way. Because this only allows you to go bishop g4, pinning that knight. You're just going to take. That's the thing. If they take, thinking they are going to mate, you just go king d8. And you're safe. There's just nothing that is happening here. King f2. Here you can even oversimplify the game like this. Queen takes, queen takes, bishop takes. And after king takes, you just take back with the dark squad bishop. And you're just up a piece for nothing. So after f4 and queen a5, if bishop d2 comes, again just remember to go e5 and e takes d4 before you put your queen on b6. So if pawn to e5, we saw what happens after knight d5, you just retreat your queen back to d8. But what if white plays knight f3 in this position? What's our plan? Since we don't want to keep tension on the center, as we saw in the introduction of this video, this is how we release tension, taking on d4 so that after knight takes, this is when we play queen b6, targeting two spots. So by this time, you might be wondering why I concentrated so much on this move pawn to f4. This is what seems to be the most challenging to many Czech players. And yeah, pawn to f3 is also a move, but those kinds of moves just allow us to have a comfortable game. In the Leeches database, the top played move after playing pawn to c6, the Czech defense, is knight f3 but against this it's up to you to go into the perk defense lines if you still don't want to go back to the perk you can stick to our plan queen a5 e5 pawn takes then queen b6 beginning with the move queen a5 because we are pinning this knight to the king and also threatening to take on e4 so once again if bishop d3 this is when we go pawn to e5 worse off if white takes we can just take back and our e5 pawn is well defended we'll also play queen c7 in the near future but after knight f3 and queen a5 white doesn't always have to defend his e4 pawn like this you know cutting their communication they can also play pawn to e5 but like always you don't even have to take to open up things just go knight e4 putting more pressure on the pin knight theoretically speaking people like taking on d6 like this but it's up to you to take the pawn or take this knight so that after pawn takes you go queen takes c3 check and after bishop d2 you go queen a3 if d takes e7 you take back with your bishop so they play bishop d3 in this position after which you cast a short and then they cast a short then you continue playing chess Another move that we may look at lastly is this move pawn to f3. You know they want to start pawn storming on the king side but this is too late in the check defense due to c6 which supports b5 and also queen a5. Like again it's up to you to continue with the normal perk defense knowing that your queen side is already open you have pawn to b5 and b4 and if you want you can just stick to our queen a5 plan and next e5 e takes d4 and queen b6. In this line, because white doesn't have knight f3, you may see them playing bishop e3, the top played move in the master's database. Once again, you simply go pawn to e5. Because if pawn takes, pawn takes, your e5 pawn will be well defended. You also have queen c7 in the near future. So they'll play something like queen d2 here, intending to castle long so that they can freely start pawn storming on the king side. But here you can just go bishop e7 and say after castle long, immediately they castle long, by the way, you go pawn to b5. That's the idea. So that you may be the first one to reach their king very fast. In this position, if knight b1 is played, you can even castle short if you want. g5 doesn't do a thing by the way at worst you have knight h5 at best you can just play knight fd7 leave your pawns like this don't move any pawn that's one biggest secret you guys don't move any pawn not even the g6 pawn just leave your pawns like that white won't go anywhere say pawn to h4 by white this is when you can release the tension e takes d4 and after bishop takes it seems like you are running out of moves but you have c5 bishop a6 if bishop e3 by the way we even had queen takes a2 
this will come later on in the game and also bishop a6 just to open up things so while white is attacking on the king side you just think of storming the queen side with whatever pieces you have that can reach your opponent's king very fast so this is just about the check defense that i wanted to show you guys so i propose that you try the check defense beginning with knight f6 and after something like knight c3 you go c6 not g6 so that if they become aggressive you remember to execute our plan beginning with queen a5 pawn to e5 pawn takes and queen b6 done those are the only things to memorize in the check defense now time for you to go and check out my new e5 defense course which i have also linked in the comment section down below and i'm glad to say so far it has received a lot of attention and people are getting it like crazy so it's an opening response that you try against white's e4 opening you're going to learn how to play against the scorch the ruler pairs the bishops opening three knights opening the four knights game the vienna game even the italian game so it's the complete e5 defense course that i just launched with my team you better go and check it out thank you so much for watching this video until next time have a wonderful day bye bye